Hello. I'm reading a lot of uh, comments regarding the interconnects. Uh, there are lots of discussions regarding selection, which one, which material, how long. And there are uh, different variations out there with um, different lengths and even materials. I just wanted to uh, test it for myself how the impedance of an interconnect is changing because after all the, uh, when you are looking for the best interconnect between two devices you have to match the input impedance of uh, one the out, uh, to the output impedance to the other so in theory there should be only one interconnect that can make the match perfect but um, since uh, the materials and the conductors are changing <laughs> There should be some variations between them. The best interconnect being uh, as flat as possible. It's very difficult to gauge just from the description uh, how is it going to perform. So in order to be able to measure it, I came up uh, with a terminator. So this terminator uh, has a 600 ohm, 650 ohm uh, resistor at one side. Uh, the reason is uh, this is to mimic the presence of an equipment. Because if you just short circuit the output of the interconnect, um, there is no current flowing through it, so it will measure flat. However, um, in order to see uh, how is it going to behave on the load? You have to terminate it with a resistance like this. In fact, uh, this is, it should not be a pure resistance. It should be a complex uh, impedance. Yet again, um, this will change from source to source. If it is a CD player, if it is a phono preamp, it will change dramatically. So we can not have a complex load that will cover all those differences that's why I'm just using a simple resistor here and uh, I'm going to look uh, at the resist uh, the cables that I have at home uh, starting from the cheap uh, radio shack cable that you can find in any shop and I'm going to just connect it to this uh, terminate terminator and I'm going to switch to Clio. Clio is in on mode, and we are going to uh, scan with one twelve octave re resolution with one twelve octave smoothing. So um, let's start the measurement by clicking on the green button. So, um, let's measure, uh, let's zoom in to this measurement. I'm trying to bring it to one ohm scale, but if, if it clips out softer, okay. So we ended up with two ohm scale. So this is what is uh, happening, uh, this is 100 Hz and below 100 Hz it's uh, showing good conductance, like uh, when it is dropping it is conducting better, when it is going up, for example for high frequencies it is showing high resistance. So this is going to be a um, good conductor in the low frequencies and a little bit worse at high frequencies um, and it will shape the uh, frequency response accordingly so let's mark this as red and switch to another cable um, next is a Sony cable. This used to come with uh, some of their equipment. 
and it's a very old old one so let's see if it is going to be any different let's connect it to the terminator I'm doing it with one hand, please bear with me. So it is a little bit more resistive than the radio shack, but frequency response wise it is more or less the same. I mark it in blue. Let's switch to another cable. What we have next is a acoustic research concert series. Nothing that special, it's just another cable to look at. Voila. Yes, everything is up. Ready, let's capture this measurement too. This is more or less the same. This market is green. Let's go to another cable. What we have next is a MIT AVT2. Let's mark this as orange. So overall, the high frequencies is different than all the other cables, where the low frequencies are more or less the same. And that's the two ohm difference at high frequencies, depending on what type of Devices are connected to together that that may be hearable. Okay, so these are the differences between cables that I have, and let's go back to the first claim that I made in the very beginning of the video, saying that uh, if I just shorted the cable, uh, the frequency response will be different. So. Now that uh, the MIT is connected, let's move on with the MIT. I am going to uh, disconnect the terminator, 600 ohm terminator, and I'm going to connect uh, 50 ohm. Mm. Yeah, here. 50 ohm terminator that measures exactly 49 ohms. So let's compare the 600 ohm frequency response with the 50 ohm performance. The scale is now 1 ohm and it measures completely flat. So just shorting the cable and measuring it, of course it's going to flat, be flat. But if you load the cable then you let it run 
uh, current through it and the capacitive and inductive parts becomes active and they will have a word to say on the frequency response of the cable so just to think about while selecting the um, interconnects maybe uh, to ask the supplier to provide the 600 ohm load frequency response of the interconnect to make a more conscious selection.